connect me with Worldwide, please? Why, Mr. Young! Yes. How do you look? Oh, tear me down. Why don't you bring me back from Spain? Pass that around. Oh, is that all? <laughs> yes, Mr. Dick. Are you working here, or is that just a rumor? Where's Chicago? In Illinois. Oh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Here's your party, Mr. Sears. Well, it's sure good to have you back, Ted. I bet it was exciting. Thanks, kids. The old homestead doesn't look a day older. Hi, you big fella. Hey, you're looking great. See you later. For three shifts. Still the prettiest girl in the office. We've got a date coming up. Don't forget. Hello, Ted. Hello, babe. See you later, Ted. Okay, honey. Say, listen, where's the rest of the gang? Blake's in Cleveland covering that strike. And Hogan just left for Miami. And Charlie. How's good old Charlie? <coughs> What's the matter? Isn't anything wrong, is it? Oh, no. Uh, Mr. Sears is quite well. Charlie! Well, how is my favorite cameraman? Hi, you rat. That's the old pal. I knew you'd miss me. Like I miss flea powder with coffee. Oh, now, is that nice after all I've done for you? Sure, I'll never forget what you did for me, double-crossing me out of that little trip to Spain. But it was all for your own good, Charlie. You might have gotten yourself shot or something. And think of the loss of the newsreel business. The best cameraman that ever photographed a baby show. Well, but it's my favorite secretary. Hi, Eclair. Well, hello, Ted. I'm glad to see you back. Oh, I feel great. Is the uh, boss in? Oh, yes. I think you've been looking forward to this. Oh. And, uh, Mr. Sears, you want on the phone. Cheyenne calling. Watts phone's in. Have him grab the next plane to Frisco. And if the tone war is over, tell him to start another one. Hey, what comes off there? Who does overhead think he is? At you, Lane? Just what do you think you're supposed to be doing down in that forest fire? Shooting rabbits or shooting film? Oh, it was too hot for you. Wait a minute. Yeah? Phil? What do you want? Well, get this. It's gonna be too hot for you around this office if you come back without that fire. Hello, is that you, Senator? What can I do for you? Tomorrow? Your little daughter? You know, Bet we'll cover it. I'll have one of our best men there. Much obliged, Senator. Well, congratulations, old boy. I knew you had it in you. Yes, sir, Charlie. And nobody wishes you any more luck than your old pal, Teddy. Thanks. I knew you'd feel that way. Well, I do. Two o'clock tomorrow, young. Something big? The biggest baby parade ever held in Asbury Park. What? Baby parade. And be sure you include the senator's baby daughter. Oh, have a heart, Charlie. That's not my kind of stuff. What do I know about babies? Well, I can learn. Certainly not too late for you. Listen, sweetheart, if you think because you're sitting on the driving seat, you're going to ride me all over so the place. So you can't take it, I huh? can take it as fast as you can dish it out. You want to make something out of it? Hello, J.B. Hi, Mr. Willen. So you're back. I trust you enjoyed your vacation. Yes, sir. No, sir. I mean, splendid. A few more newsreels like the one I just saw in the projection room, Mr. Sears, and we'll all be taking a vacation. Permanently. I thought it was up to standard, J.B. That's the trouble. Rodeo's parades, bathing beauties. Baby. Baby. Yes, sir, Mr. Willard. Know just how you feel about it. Charlie's done the best he could. The public is fed up looking at the same thing over and over again. What we need is headline news. Where do you see my war stuff? I don't have to wait. I've seen it. Oh, you couldn't have. It hasn't been developed yet. I haven't even seen it myself. Take a look at these. You ought to recognize them. Why, reporter? Well, what of it? Yes, five days ago, while you were still over there congratulating yourself, those photographs are on the front page of every newspaper in the country. By the time our film reaches the theaters, we'd be lucky if the war isn't over. Wire photo still is a newsreel. Newspaper. Wire photo. And that. I tell you, it's beginning to hurt. The latest news report coming to you directly from the Associated Press. Trenton. That's what you're up against? People all over the country are listening to it. Sometimes while it's happening. No wonder we're losing contract. The $100,000 prize in the sweepstake lottery today was with Martha Millicent Jones of Dubuque, Iowa. Other American winners were Myrtle Harper, Brooklyn, New York, $40,000. Arthur Halligan, Brainerd, Minnesota, $15,000. James Corrigan, Los Angeles, $10,000. Bessie Martin of Seattle, $5,000. Preston Carter, Detroit, $5,000. And those are the winners in the sweepstake lottery. This concludes our afternoon broadcast of the radio news. Shucks. Oh, I didn't really think I'd win. I never do. Nancy. Yes, Aunt Jane. Uh, can you let me have a dollar? Why, well, certainly. I just bought five yards of that material we were looking at. And when I looked in my bag, I found I'd left my money home. Oh, dear. Nancy, gambling again. Oh, it isn't really gambling, Aunt Jane. It, 
It's for charity. Oh, charity fiddlesticks. What will the schoolboy think? You couldn't teach anymore. I don't care what they think. I don't care if it is gambling. I'm sorry I didn't win. Those other people, they can be somebody now. Go places and do things. They won't have to go on taking in borders and making over last year's clothes and teaching school. Nancy, you're ill. Well, so would you be if that was all you had to look forward to. But you don't have to teach school after we're married, Nancy. Don't upset her, Andrew. She isn't herself. I'm sick of being myself. I want to be somebody else. Well, who, who do you want to be, Nancy? Oh, somebody who doesn't have to be a hypocrite for a lot of narrow-minded people who try to run your life for you. Gosh, I never knew you felt that way about it. If I have to stay in this town forever, I'll die. You're coming home with me. What you need is a good dose of sulfur and molasses. Morning, Miss Jones. Morning, Mr. Pettywell. Oh, Miss Nancy. You better take this letter while you're here. Oh, thank you. Jane. What is it? Something you're afraid of? What does it say? Oh, my reading glasses. Andrew, you read it. Supreme Television Corporation, New York City. Dear Miss Jones, I am happy to inform you that your slogan, Television, Your Eyes and Ears of the Future, has been awarded first prize in our national contest. Gosh! What is it? Uh, oh, what did you win? New York. Huh? Oh, for a whole week with all my expenses paid. Don't you understand, Aunt Jane? A trip I've waited for all my life. Alone? She won't have to be alone if I can arrange to go with her. Oh, no, Andy. I want this just to be my holiday. Nancy. Oh. Aren't you going to kiss me? I'll send you a postcard. Make a snap it, kid. This train only stops here a few minutes. Ah, uh, sweepstake winner. How it feels to win a hundred grand? If I had my choice about shooting her, it wouldn't be with a camera, I know. What two bucks did you lose on that gamble? Don't you know the other guy always wins? Oh, you're not kidding me, Ted. Sears is giving you a ride. With two blocks of water in front on fire and he suckers you into an assignment like this? Uh, maybe he's right this time. Personality in the news. What personality has a waterfront got? Anybody can shoot a fire. Yeah, anybody except us. Well, at least Charlie's tip on this one is exclusive. Hey, Bud. <laughs> exclusive. Uh, Bud, uh, don't you think that car is parked in the wrong place there? Huh? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, <clears throat> how about doing something about it? See in front. Why, Mr. Young. <laughs> Never know who you're going to run into. Yes, sir, the world's getting smaller every day. Sort of crowded, Maloney. Hey, what's a big shot like you doing out here, anyway? See it in your favorite theater next week. Don't be funny. See it in your favorite newspaper tonight. Copyright by wire photo. Always first for the news. So long, Young. See you in Mothball. Hey, Maloney. Wait, sir. A little careless about your brakes, I'd say. Part of his distributor. Nice going, kid. Hey, conductor, you've got a Miss Jones on this train. You know, one of the hometown broken down sweepstake winners. Oh, is that who she is? You know, I had a ticket on that myself. All right, where is she? There's a Miss Jones in car 27, compartment D. Thanks. Thank Say, you. set up an observation car. Yeah. Oh, no, in the back. Always in the back. Oh, always in the back. Hey, fella, what are you trying to do? Collect insurance on that heap? Well, I never put it there. Have you been drinking? I tell you, I would frame. They're getting nuttier every day. Come on, Joe, give a hand. We're late now. Hey, you. Come on, get busy. Or would you like to have us drive around you? Oh, excuse me. Miss Jones? 
Excuse me. Oh, uh, that's all right. Excuse me, Miss Jones. Are you looking for me? Uh, well, you're not Miss Jones. Well, 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 I had no idea it was going to be you. Miss Jones, I'm from the Worldwide Newsreel. I'm here to interview you. Me? Yes, indeed, you're a celebrity. You really owe it to the public. They'd be interested in you. Yes, sir, particularly after they've seen you. Well, oh, it's quite painless. Now, if you just come this way, the light in here wouldn't do you justice. The yes. Worldwide is always first. Wait till I get the guy that did this. Hey, how would you like to have us change your oil? I'm a little closer, Miss Jones. That's fine. I don't know what to say. Just tell them in your own words how you feel about your good fortune. Smile, Miss Jones. That's it. Now remember just one thing. The whole world is looking right at you. All right, here we go. Go ahead. Well, well, it all happened so suddenly that I'm still not quite used to it. You, I wish everybody could have won, but of course I'm glad it was I. You see, this is the first time I've ever won anything, and it's my first trip to New York. Well, goodbye now. Worldwide Newsreel Building, please. Your party doesn't answer. I'll keep trying. Yes. Please, may I see the manager? It's about those pictures you took. The sweepstakes winner. I'm Miss Jones. Oh, Miss Jones. Yes, I'll tell Mr. Sears. Yeah? Who? Well, what does she want? Oh, well, she says she's that sweepstakes winner. No, I'm not the winner. There's been a mistake. Oh, oh yes, mistakes will happen. I bet $5 on a horse yesterday and found out later I could have bought them for $6.50. She says she's not the winner. But I'm not Charlie McCarthy. What is this, a newsreel office or the Bureau of Missing Persons? Uh, yes, Mr. Sears. I'm sorry, Mr. Sears. Mr. Sears is busy. Well, then, may I see Mr. Young? Oh, Ted Young? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. He's out on an assignment. Oh, but I must find him. It's very important. Well, you might try the glove department of the Champs Training Camp. Well, that's what I came to tell you. I'm not Millicent Jones. My name's Nancy. And I never won anything in my life until the Supreme Company's television contest. Television contest. Your eyes and ears are the future. That's the slogan that won me this trip to New York. When you stopped me on the train, of course I thought you knew who I was. Y you thought the 50,000 contests going on every day, you had to think that was news. But you know what you've done? You did it, I didn't. How should I know you thought I was somebody else? Why, this is going to make worldwide the laughing stock of the newsreel business. They're going to have to call that film back from every theater in the country. Well, why did you think I came here? To pay you a social visit? Did you flatter yourself that you were so irresistible? Well, well you're not. Well, who said anything about that? I'm glad I'm not who you thought I was. I'm glad I haven't any money, you, you fortune hunter. Oh, that's what you think about me. Yes, that's what I think about you. Okay, okay, have it your own way. Hey, driver, pull up over there and stop, will you? Wait for me here. Yes, sir. Got a phone, Dad? Yeah, have you got a nickel? You can go on, driver. Hello? Hello? Charlie? Say, something's happened. What? What? What do you think of that? feet of that and better use it to end the reel. Hello, sweetheart. Where have you been? I tried to tell you on the telephone, but you were too busy shooting off that big mouth of yours to listen to me. What? Why, you... You'd better get busy and call back the film of that sweepstake winner because I shot the wrong winner. 
Yeah. The minute she saw herself on the screen, she drove up here to tell me all about it. She's pretty burned up, Charlie. And I don't blame her. It was your fault. My fault? Why, you double-crosser! Go ahead. Yell your head off. I don't want to listen to you. Why don't they nail down these seats? Who got the tip to set me up there on that phony? You did. Won't be any laughing matter to the old man if that girl sues you for your shirt. If you don't think she's got a swell case, sweetheart, ask your lawyer. I guess that's about all, Charlie, except to say I know how much you're going to miss me when I you're tell you... Fired. I resign. I'll have your black balls in every newsreel in this town. I'll... I'll... Do you realize what that guy's done? Why do you know that that, that, that girl, why, 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 she can sue us for our church? So I just heard from Ted. If I know I could dip my hands on that guy, I'd... I'd... That's what I mean, Mr. Pullis. That's what they're looking at right now in half the theaters in the country. The World Series played on mechanical board, a pretty poor substitute for the real thing, I'd say. No doubt, young man, but I And why are they doing it? I'll tell you why. Because they don't want to wait a week or so to see it in the newsreel. Why, we're living in an age of speed, when the things that happen today are forgotten tomorrow. That's why I'm here, Mr. Wallace, because you've got the speed and I've got the answer. Television newsreel, how's that sound to you? Well... I knew you said, why, we'll revolutionize the business. With your equipment and my experience, nothing can stop us. Nothing whatever, young man, except that it won't work. Well, what's the matter with it? They're waiting for you in the laboratory, Mr. Walters. If you'll excuse me, I haven't time to discuss it now. Mr. Walters. out covering the series, young. They tell me the Giants aren't doing so well. They've got nothing on me. Hotel Weldon, I'd like to speak to Miss Jones. Nancy Jones. Indeed. I'm afraid you can't. She's not here. Well, where did she go? But, Miss Jones, if you'll just listen to I me. I have listened to you, and I don't like it. And stop following me. What do you think you're doing? As manager of this hotel, Miss Jones, I'm sure you will understand. I have to protect our dignified reputation from, uh, from unfortunate notoriety. Under the you circumstances, I... You think that I'm a... Now you can tell it to this gentleman. His newsreel is to blame for all this. No, 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 please, Miss Jones. After all, mistakes can happen, you know, and can be very costly ones. Costly? In a case of this sort, where our reputation is at stake, we have but one course of action. No, 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 no wait a minute. Uh, Miss Jones, your attorney mustn't be too hasty. My who? I, I realize this has been a trying experience for everyone concerned now, but we must just talk this over quietly. There is nothing to talk over. I regret the necessity, Miss Jones, but I shall expect you to find other accommodation. But I'm not who you think I am. Good day. Oh, so it's funny, is it? Being mistaken for somebody else. It wouldn't be so funny if I had called an attorney. It would serve you right. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Miss Jones, please. Now, you must be calm. Oh, how would you like it? Looking forward to it all your life. Waiting for the chance. Dreaming, planning for it. A holiday like, like this. No, I'm sure it isn't as bad as all that, Miss Jones. You're excited. We're both excited. I'm not excited. What do you want? Nancy, I went to the station as soon as I found out. I wouldn't let a thing like this happen to you. You got a lot of nerve coming here after the jam you got this little girl into. Why didn't you tell me who she was when I had you on the phone? Ah, you were too busy with that monologue of yours. I'll tell you why I didn't give you the tip off about you. Because I fired him for that fight bone he pulled. So he had on his mind, putting me on the spot, even if you had to be the goat. Oh, that's a lie, Nancy. You've got to believe me. Yes, sir, you can double-cross her the way you did me. Get out of here, Steers. Come on, beat it. Yes, get out. You heard the lady. Both of you. Huh? Get out. No, 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 
So I'm a double crosser, am I? That's what I said. Oh. Are you hurt? I didn't know Charlie had it in him. Oh, um. Oh, uh. Oh, you forgot your hat. Oh, thanks. Well, wait a minute. Hey. Hey. Oh. Poor little water jug. She must have dropped it. No, no, no. I'll take it to the lady. I know it well worth it. Uh, thanks. Oh, you, you dropped your water chuck out there, and I found it, and the manager told me to bring it to you. Oh, no, he told me to hide it from you. <laughs> oh. you. You don't believe everything that guy said about me, do you? Why, I wouldn't cause you any harm. No, I guess you just can't help it. You're not going away, are you? Don't you think it's a good idea while I'm still in one piece? Oh, I know it hasn't been much fun for you, but I wanted to tell you something. Ever since you walked out on me back there on that road, I'm glad you're not that sweepstakes winner. I'm glad you're nobody except Nancy Jones, because if you were somebody else, well, I wouldn't have met you. Well, that hasn't brought either of us much luck. It did me. But you lost your job, and so will I, as soon as that school board sees my picture. You don't have anything to worry about. Now when we've got a proposition so hot, it's going to burn the newsreel film right out of existence, your eyes and ears of the future. That's what you gave to me. It's going to turn the newsreel business upside down, too. Television? Bullseye. Why, Ted, I... Oh, say that again. Say what? What you just said, what you just called me. You never said that to me before. Hadn't you better keep your mind on television, Mr. Young? Yeah, yes, maybe you're right. We'll go to our rooms later. Right now, we want to surprise my niece. Lady, nothing would surprise your niece right now. We shouldn't have let her come here alone in the first place, Miss Jones. There was something very funny about the way Nancy was acting when she left. I noticed she hadn't been eating right lately. I hope that's all it was. Anyway, I feel better now that we're here. Ah, everybody I talked to said the time wasn't ready for it yet, that they couldn't broadcast television more than 50, 60 miles. So what? That's their tough luck. Somebody's going to do it. Well, why didn't you go to the Supreme Company? They're going to be the first to put television sets on the market anyway. And Mr. Powell's the man who picked my slogan. After that boner I pulled on his slogan winner, I didn't exactly expect a cordial reception. Well, uh, does he have to know? Thanks. Probably Simon McGree back again. Nancy. Oh, Aunt Jane. Why? Uh, hello, Nancy. Well, uh, how I know? why didn't you let me? Andrew thought it'd be better to surprise you. It seems such a... Oh, this is, this is Mr. Young, my Aunt Jane, and this is Andrew, Mr. Horton. Oh, why, how are you? How do you do? I'm... Oh, oh uh, Mr. Young's in the newsreel business. Well, that is, he was. You see, uh, he's the cameraman who interviewed me at the train. Oh, yes, and uh, my niece wired us. Uh, Mr. Young was just leaving. Oh, that's right. Well, I'll just say good day. It's nice to have seen you. Bye, Aunt Jane. Bye, Andy. Hey, Andrew. Oh, I'm so glad you came. So am I. Nancy, if you weren't my niece and I didn't know you... Oh, don't be silly, Aunt Jane. Mr. Young's a perfectly respectable gentleman. Oh, drop a chair, Andy. He just happened to be calling on me while I was... Unpacking a few things. Yes, well, you can pack them right up again, because we're going home. Oh, but Aunt Jane, you and Andy haven't seen anything of New York. We've seen enough, if you ask me. No, Andrew. Oh, so that's why you came, to spy on me. Nancy, he never said that. Oh, he doesn't have to say it, Aunt Jane. He's thinking it. What do you expect me to think when I find you entertaining a strange man in your room? I wasn't entertaining him. Well, he didn't look bored to me. Andrew. Oh, darling, I don't think you or Andrew could ever understand. Chairs, Supreme Television. Certainly it's going up. Didn't you read that story this morning? Eighteen and a 
quarter, 18 and a half, 18 and three quarters, 19. <laughs> well, not bad for a stock that opened up at 14. As soon as that newsreel announcement broke this morning, I knew we'd skyrocket. I'm so glad, Mr. Powell. You ought to get on the bandwagon yourself, Ruth. You can make more money in a day than even I pay you in a week. Thank you, Mr. Powell. I think I will. This one's from the Theater Owners Association. Oh. Young knew what he was talking about. Every exhibitor in the country is anxious to get in on the ground floor. Mr. Powell's office. Oh, just a moment, please. The Union Newsreel Company. Ask Mr. Young to come in, will you? He's being interviewed for an article in the Scientific Home magazine, Mr. Powell. Yes, sir, Mr. Popolis, you may tell your readers that newsreel television is now a reality. In a short time, we'll have a set in every home. Precisely, Mr. Young. That's exactly what our readers are anxious to know. Specifically, how do you manage to overcome the curvature of the Earth? How? Of course, I realize if the Earth were flat, there would be no television problem. But since ultra-high radio frequency transmissions travel in a straight line, like this. How do you manage to transmit them, say, from San Francisco to New York? Like this. <laughs> well, you're uh, not very well informed, are you, Mr. Poplis? Well, I admit I'm really a lame. Oh. Well, then it would be quite difficult for me to explain to you the um, technical side of it. Uh, uh, perhaps I could help you some. Now, if you will just take this and stand here, please. <laughs> now, this is New York. You're here. And this is set the Pacific Ocean. And this represents the Rocky Mountains. Now, how do you manage to transmit them, say, from there to there when you can't climb over the mountains? Why not? <clears throat> what does an airplane do uh, from here to there? Doesn't it travel in a straight line like this? It just goes a little higher than the mountain, that's all. Uh, a little higher than the mountain. That's all I can tell you now, Mr. Poppins. You see, I'm uh, not permitted to reveal the engineering secrets of our process. It, you just must climb higher, that's all I can tell you. Uh, climb a little higher. A little higher. <coughs> yes. Now I see what you mean. Thank you very much, Mr. Young. Did I say something? I just signed a contract with that worldwide outfit, and now what happens? Television. This gentleman to see Mr. Young. Go. Our readers will be very gratified, Mr. Young. And thank you again. Yes, yes. You see, anything you like, it's all right with me. And good day, Mr. Poplis. Good day, sir. Don't forget to buy Talladega. Thank you. If you'd ask about newsreels, I'd know what I was talking about. <laughs> Charlie! Well, uh, how's my favorite cameraman? Oh, you remember Miss Jones, don't you? Yes, how do you do, Miss Jones? Hello. Don't forget lunch. One o'clock, and remember, no Andrew. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Seals. Goodbye, Miss Jones. Charming girl. A little impulsive at times, but uh, you know how women are. Or don't you? Well, tell old boy, congratulations. Thanks, Charlie. I didn't know you'd feel that way about it. I thought you were a little sour on your old pal. What, me? Now, about this uh, television proposition, Ted, old boy, I, I've just had a long talk with J.B. He was a little skeptical at first. You know how he is. He's brought up in the old school, always difficult for him to see something new. But then, after I sold him on you, Ted, old boy, he saw the light. Uh, of course, we'd uh, like to have a practical demonstration oh, first. Sure. Say, that's swell of you, Charlie. I always knew you'd put it over, Ted. I've been waiting to put it over ever since I last saw you. Catch, catch, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike. I guess this setup ought to be all right. I'm counting on you at the controls. This demonstration means everything to me. Boy, television sure is a break for me. No more cameras to load, a film can't to lug around. 
A chump could work this outfit. Then I don't have to worry about anything, huh? <laughs> no. Hey, 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 hey. What's the matter? You're my favorite cameraman, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> Outside of Charlie. <laughs> I'd like to see his little face when this box starts to work. Well, I got a scram, kid. Just got time to make it. Now, don't forget to switch your angles and change your focus when she makes the landing. And, uh, good luck. Mr. Powell can't be disturbed, and Mr. Young isn't in his office. I'm not leaving here till I get Miss Jones' return ticket. I'm sorry, sir, if there's been a mistake. If Mr. Young thinks he's going to pull a fast one on me, he's looking for a lot of trouble. You folks brought her here, and I'm here to see that she gets back home. Now, you find out about that ticket, because she's leaving today. Hey! Just a minute, Mr. Young. Well, 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 if it isn't any. How are you, Andrew? Uh, fine. I, I came to see you about... Oh, of course. Miss Jones has told you all about the demonstration we're having. Well, Andrew, it's a pleasure to have you here as one of our guests. In years to come, you can look back on this day as one of the biggest moments of your life. Is that so? When you were one of the first men privileged to stand time and distance in the twinkling of an eye. Yes, sir, Andrew. You were about to witness for the first time in history a broadcast on newsreel television. Well, that ought to be quite an experience. What's that? You'll see for yourself, gentlemen, in a few minutes. Hello, J.B., and meet Mr. Horton, a friend of Miss Nancy Jones. How do you do? Yes? She's coming in. We're ready when you are. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, the D-46 is arriving at the airport. Now, Mr. Willard, if you sit over there, you boys go in the front here. I'll have it going in a moment. Sit tight, sweetheart. Here we go. Great Scott. Didn't I tell you, J.B.? that while it's happening. It's terrific. It certainly is. I still can't believe my eyes. Maybe it's the glasses you're wearing. Gentlemen, there you have it. Oh, no, they have it. Not yet, Mr. Powell. What? Bring your checkbook, J.B. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> Don't mind anything Mr. Young says. That's uh, just his way. It certainly was a thrill, Mr. Young, and I want to thank you. Don't try to tell me now about it, old man. I know just how you feel. Experience you'll never forget. You just take my advice and put some money in television stock when you get back in that little radio Yeah, shop. but that's what I'm trying to say. You see, Mr. Young, about Nancy, her, her train ticket back home. She... Her ticket? Oh, didn't she tell you she's not going home? Oh, yes, she is. Oh, excuse me, I thought you knew. You'd better ask her about it. You want it on the phone, Mr. Young? Uh, tell him I'll catch it in Powell's office. Well, uh, it was a pleasure, and goodbye, Andrew, and uh, uh, goodbye. Hello? Oh, gee, kid, it was great. Came over like a million bucks. Ted, you never saw anything like it in your life. It was awful. What? Are you nuts? I tell you, it was great. What? What? Are you crazy? You see the fires? I couldn't believe it. What's the world we're living in, J.B.? Yes, there's a lot you've done about it. Okay, kid. Get in here as quick as you can. Ted, old boy, I'm proud of you. You are? Who gave me a start in this business? You or I? My boy, we've just seen a miracle. Miracle? Yeah. I'll say it was. Oh, wait a minute, old man. J.B.'s got a proposition for you. Save it. Young! 
Look here, Powell, he can't do that to me. Where's his loyalty? I came here prepared to do business with you, and I can meet any other offer you have. That's your television. Last year's movie film. So that's what you've been framing me with. Take it easy, young. You better start talking fast, Powell. We couldn't take a chance on that portable transmitter. There's too many obstructions between here and the airport. The broadcast would never come through. It was all a phony. Just a stock promotion. Well, what about those thousands of people who bought stock in our outfit? Bought it because they believe in what we promised. Television's only a matter of time. An investment for the future. We need their money to develop it. You crook. While we were listening to your phony broadcast, you know what happened out there in that airport? That dirigible blew up. What? And your whole crooked outfit blew up with it. Now, wait a minute, young. We're in this together. We'll see it happened right after I shut off the transmission. Oh, will we? They're going to hear the truth now. my associate, gentlemen. He's willing that I should handle the financial arrangements. Good. That's more like it. It'll take some time to iron out the details of the contract. But in the meantime, if you care to sign this agreement, I'm ready to stop all other negotiations and grant you exclusive rights to Supreme Television. Consideration of the sum of... Of course, if the proposition is too big for your firm to handle, there's no need of taking up any more of your time. At all, Paul. Nothing of the sort. Worldwide is as solid as the Bank of England. Congratulations. With Worldwide and Supreme Television joining their resources, we'll dominate the new amusement era. Mr. Powell, you couldn't tie up with a better organization. I'll say goodbye for Mr. Young. He's busy with a long-distance call. Well, until tomorrow, Powell. Good day, sir. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Sears. Goodbye. Bank driver. Listen, honey, where's Mr. Powell live? I want to send him a rat trap. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you, JB. Get this stuff into the lab and tell him to rush it. Every theater in town's gonna be waiting. Waiting for what? The Zeppelin. Didn't you hear? She blew up. What? Blew up? JB, we've been trained. What are you standing there for? Do something. Well, didn't you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Give me the police department.
you two. See what's in those bags, Joe? Yeah, I can almost get. Fighting over the dough, eh? No, I was just trying to get you guys on a telephone. Just a minute, lady. The office is closed. Oh, but I must see Mr. Young. We'd like to see him ourselves. Well, well, then I'll see Mr. Powell. You can't go in there. Uh, we just heard about the Zeppelin officer. They're crooks. I'm here to tell the authorities about it. Smooth workers, those boys. Might have got away with it, too, if the brakes had been with them. Might have. What about that ten grand they got away with? And two hundred of mine. Where is he? You're the eyes and ears of the future. You tell us, Miss Jones. Or was your playmate in such a hurry that he forgot to tell you? He... he ran away? Well, he's not hiding under the carpet. What did I tell you? Oh, there must be some mistake. He couldn't have done this. Oh, but Nancy... I don't care what you say about him. I don't believe it. Soldier pretty solid on himself, didn't he, Miss Jones? I'm surprised after that other trouble he got you into. Ah, uh, she's not the only one he sold. What about me? I know he's a heel to start with, and then he turns around and he sells me all over again. Yeah, but I never thought he'd deal a card this way. He wasn't a nice kid like you to front for him. Yes, this is Johnson. Oh, you cheap. What? Okay. They caught him with Powell trying to make a getaway. I'm sorry, kid. Well, Andy, our vacation's over. Gives a fellow an appetite just thinking about it. About what, Andrew? Sitting across the table from Nancy like this? Every morning. Oh, dear. No, you stay here. You'll only make her worse. Come in. Telegram for Miss Jones. She'll be right back. I'll take it. Yes, sir. Are you sure that telegram was delivered? Yeah, but I've been waiting. Okay. expect you to do? Go ahead, rub it in. I've got it coming to me. Well, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Nothing much matters. How about an assignment? Okay, skip it. I'm not giving assignments anymore. I'm taking them. I'm back to where I started, carrying a camera. Well, you didn't have that coming to you. You think the old man was going to give me a bonus for steering him into your phony setup? I'm sorry. I'll skip it. I always wanted to go to China. China? You? In half an hour. Sure. What's wrong with that? Oh, listen, Charlie. Those aren't firecrackers they're playing with over there. That's war. <laughs> Whether they declare it or not. Listen, you. You don't want to be one of those innocent bystanders, do you? <laughs> Gee, you're too right a guy to get yourself shot, Charlie. Seems to me I remember the last time you said that. Just before you pulled that fast one that kept me from taking the boat to Spain. Remember that? Yeah. I'm sorry for that, too, Charlie. Uh, Gee, I'm sorry for a lot of things. Maybe we've both been a couple of chumps. Thanks. It's contagious hanging around you. Hey. Hey, listen, it's terribly hot in here. I'm gonna open that window. Well, you're something in there. Come on. Come on. I got to get you out of here, Charlie. Yeah, sure, that's right. Come on. What's your hurry, mister? Well, I got to go to China. 
Oh, cut out the kidding, old man. Who's the guy that threw that bottle? Oh, he didn't mean it, officer. Honest. It was just an accident. Isn't that right, Charles? What bottle? What are you talking about? Come on, fella, you're going with me. Well, what is it? Don't start a war. It'll just make it worse for you. You said it, mister. Come oh, on. Wait a minute. What is this? A frame up? I tell you, I gotta go to China. And I... Sure, we'll both go. You can't. You double crosser. Don't be too rough on him, officer. It isn't his fault. <laughs> Just goes a little higher in the mountain, that's all. Yes, yes, Mr. Willett, I know all about that demonstration. It's unfortunate Young had to be the victim of an unscrupulous promoter. But it's important, Mr. Willett, that we locate him at once. And I might add, it's important to you. But, but how? Are you sure? Well, of course I'll try to find him, Mr. Walters. Yes, I'll let you know at once. Did you hear that? Mr. Walters says it's going to work. I don't understand. Neither do I, but if it's good enough for national radio vision, it's good enough for me. He says the young idiot stumbled on the answer to the one thing that stopped his own engineers. And he's going to buy out young. Yes? Police station? What is it? Sears? No, he didn't kill nobody. Not yet. Just an old-fashioned drunk. We called you to check up on his story. Huh? He wants to know why you're not on your way to China. Oh, what have I been trying to tell you? I was framed. Let me talk to him. Well, it'll do you no good. You've been fired. Hello, Mr. Willett. Mr. Willett! I told you. Telegraph office. This is Sears. Worldwide. I want to send a wire. Care of the common airliner. That's it. To Ted Young. Darling. I love you. Nothing else matters. Nancy! Hey, listen. Where's Selden? Well, the next train stop. We pass right over it. I gotta get off. Don't you understand? I gotta get off there. Sorry, we don't stop until Kansas City. What do you think of that? You better stop. Are you all right, mister? Oh, perfect. My first three-point landing. my whole life. Nothing to be so fidgety about, Emma. Everything's all right. I came as fast as I could. Oh, you'll never know what that wire meant to me. I, I thought I'd lost you for good. My wire? Yeah, that nothing else matters except us. That's all that does matter, isn't it, Nancy? Well, I don't know. Yes. Nancy! Nancy! Oh, don't pay any attention to him. He's just walking home. But I never sent you any wire. Oh, who did? Oh, I get it. 
good old Charlie. These exclusive views of the conflict in the Orient are brought to you by television. We're in the thick of it here, folks, fighting all around us, bombing planes overhead. It's no picnic, and I want to tell you, you're mighty lucky not to be here. And now, the magic carpet of television takes us to another part of the world, where the beauty and pulchritude of all countries is gathered to match its charms in this year's quest for Miss Universe. Eyes and ears. Eyes and ears? Where are they? Come on, I think you've seen enough. Hey. Besides, uh, the picture's over. 